Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be tackling the topic of coming from SolidWorks to Fusion and getting accustomed to the UI and user experience. Now, we're gonna be looking at some common settings that you can change inside of Fusion or just make you aware of them so that things can behave like you're used to in SolidWorks. We're also gonna talk about some things that SolidWorks can't do. So to get started, we are gonna first talk about pan, zoom, and orbit. Now, this is the biggest hurdle that people have when they're changing programs. Now, in Fusion, the default is to hold down the middle mouse button as pan, hold down shift in the middle mouse button for orbit, and the middle mouse wheel is zoom. You can then double click the mouse wheel to zoom to fit to screen. Now, if you're familiar with SolidWorks, you know that the middle mouse button cannot be configured, and that is always going to be free orbit. Well, in Fusion, all you need to do is go to your user preferences in the general section, and then navigate to pan, zoom, and orbit shortcuts. Inside of here, there is a SOLIDWORKS option, and this means that your pan, zoom, and orbit will behave just like they do inside of SOLIDWORKS. So if you're used to that style of navigation, then make sure that you make that change before you move into modeling anything at all. The next topic we wanna to talk about comes down to what happens when you create a new sketch. Now, by default, in Fusion, when you select the Create Sketch tool, this is gonna display the default origins for you every time. In SOLIDWORKS, this only happens for your first sketch. Once you select a sketch plane, this is gonna automatically go to a Normal 2 view. What this means is this Normal 2 or Look At view is going to be normal to that planar face or that sketch plane. This is an option that you can turn on and off, and if you happen to rotate this around, inside of the sketch palette, you can click Look At, or at the bottom center of the screen, you can click Look At and go back to that normal view once you select your plane. Now, if you go back to your user preferences and navigate to the design section, we have an option here that says auto look at sketch, and that'll allow you to always go to that normal to or look at view. Once we finish the sketch, this is gonna go back to whichever view we were previously on. And this brings me to the next topic, and that is when we create a sketch and we start sketching something, we have the option to enter dimensions here, which you also do in SOLIDWORKS. And if we simply place that and go back and add a dimension later, if this dimension is much larger, it'll allow us to auto scale and refit to screen. Now, this is an option that is not on by default inside of Fusion. So once again, in your user preferences under design, you wanna make sure that you allow the scale entire sketch at first dimension to be turned on. This will allow you to rescale if you like to do some rough sketching and come back and place dimensions later. Once again, when we finish that sketch, this allows us to go back to the previous view. Double clicking the mouse wheel will zoom to fit. The next thing that we wanna talk about comes down to how you navigate the things that you've created. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, you have a feature manager design tree on the left-hand side, and there are some tabs that allow you to go to configurations and move between various options. Inside of Fusion, we have a browser on the left-hand side, which you can scroll up and down. And at the very bottom, we have a timeline. Now, the timeline is a history-based capture of everything that you've done in a design. And once your designs get pretty complex, it can be a big challenge to find things in it. So what we wanna talk about here is ways in which Fusion is slightly different to how SOLIDWORKS works. Because the assemblies and parts are all in the same design, we can activate components, and this is going to change the display for us. This will reduce the opacity of every other component that's not active, and it'll change the timeline to only show the sketches and features that were created during the creation of that component. There's also another option, which we can right-click and select Isolate, which will hide everything else. It allows us to work on this design. We can select planar faces and look at them, and then once we're done, we can right click, go back to unisolate the design. And once we activate the top level, it'll change the opacity back. And then we can see everything as we originally intended it. So this is a great technique that allows us to minimize what we're looking at in terms of our features and our sketches. And we can always go back and isolate things, group them together in folders if needed, but it can be very easy for us to find those items. This is also true for things like sketches. We can toggle visibility on and off for sketches. We can take a look at them, again, looking normal to them. And we can toggle on and off things like the dimensions. So this is a great way for us to work within large complex assemblies. But there are a couple of other tips that we wanna talk about. If we need to find something in the browser or the timeline, let's say a feature that's part of this face, we can right click on that 
and notice that we have find in browser and find in window. When we do this find in browser, it's going to automatically find and expand the browser for us, going all the way down to this lid weldment, to the lid sheet metal component, and all the way down to the body we selected. Now, if we do this a little different, if we double click on something, it's going to select the entire component. You'll notice that it's highlighted over here. If we right click on it while it's selected and we find in the timeline, it'll identify the creation of that feature in the timeline. And we can also right click and find it in the browser as well. Anytime something is selected on screen, we'll be able to see the three hash marks next to it in the timeline and we can highlight it in the browser. So this makes it very easy for us to identify things in both the timeline and the browser when we're working on them. The timeline and browsers can also be simplified by creating folders and grouping things together so we can expand and contract them. But if that's not quite enough, there is some other tips and tricks that we do want to talk about with complex assemblies. Fusion also has some options to change the color of components in an assembly. This doesn't affect any materials or appearances that are applied. It simply changes the color of the component or body on the screen, as well as the color next to it in the browser and the color above its features in the timeline. For example, if we activate this again, you'll notice that everything here has a green bar above it. At the very end, there is a green and sort of a pink bar. Now this means that that feature is shared between multiple components. Now, the reason that's shared is maybe because an extrude or a fillet was applied to multiple bodies or components, but it could also be that we created a mirror or a copy of that body. If we activate the second one, you'll notice here that this color shows all that pink color above those components. So once again, this can be a great way that we can identify components and simplify the work on individual pieces of a large assembly. But changing the assembly to look like this can sometimes not be the right answer. If we toggle that back off and go to the gear in the bottom right, we can turn on what's called a component color swatch. This will do pretty much the same thing to the timeline and the browser without affecting the appearance of your design on the screen. So everything will stay the material or appearance that has been applied in the canvas area in the center of the screen. But now we can identify those colors and see them very clearly and easily in the browser or the timeline. We can also right click and we can toggle through those components if we want to and change them when we're looking at component color cycling. But for right now, let's go ahead and turn that back off. The last thing that we want to mention here, which once again is not every single option or tip that we can give you in the UI, but just to make sure that we are learning how to navigate inside of Fusion. At the bottom center of the screen is our navigation bar. And while most of this can be done without this navigation bar, sometimes you may want to use a constrained orbit, for example. If you have the cursor inside of that circle, it's going to orbit just as it does with the middle mouse button and holding down shift. However, if we hover over the circle, we can rotate it based on our current view. And we can also rotate it about an axis if we grab one of these axes at the top or the sides. We also can use look at, pan, and zoom. And once again, these can all be repeated by using certain shortcuts like the middle mouse wheel, as well as holding down shift. But there are some other options that don't have a shortcut like zoom window. If you wanna focus on a certain area, you can simply use zoom window and then double click the mouse wheel to fit the screen. There are also some display settings for things like changing visual style, changing the environment or the scene that we're looking at and some of the effects that we see on screen. We can also toggle on and off grids and snaps and even configure a multiple view workspace. This allows us to have linked views between the top, front, and side views and continue working and modeling as we would want. Each view that is selected is going to be considered our active view and the navigation bar as well as view cube in the upper right will follow it. To go back to a single view, we simply need to change that back and now we're back to our original configuration. With our navigation, we also have the option to use the view cube in the upper right hand corner and there are some additional options that you can find by dropping down, such as changing your current view or setting whether or not you're using perspective with orthographic faces. As you begin to work in Fusion, you'll also note that your right-click menu is going to be contextual and will also contain several other things, such as the S key shortcut menu tools that you've placed on that toolbox. So we strongly urge you to explore all types of navigation inside of Fusion, but hopefully these few tips will get you comfortable with working in Fusion if you're coming from SolidWorks.